Hi there colleagues. My name is Dr. Nath Arua and I am the hospital antimicrobial steward. I serve as the pharmacy department point man in the antimicrobial stewardship committee. I compiled this brief video to briefly explain to you all the procedure we should follow when auditing the use of or administration of antibiotics prophylactically during surgical procedures done at the Aga Khan University Hospital, Nairobi. Welcome. For any patient who undergoes surgery and doesn't have prior infection, antibiotic surgical prophylaxis is indicated. For surgical procedures where the aseptic technique isn't violated or breached, antibiotic surgical prophylaxis is indicated. According to literature, a single prophylactic dose i.e. a STAD dose suffices in most cases. Administration of prophylactic antibiotics for up to 24 hours is acceptable according to many publications. Prolonging the antibiotic use beyond 24 hours ceases to be prophylaxis and is therefore considered irrational antibiotic use. This practice exerts undue selection pressure, driving antibiotic resistance unnecessarily. It is considered bad practice in antimicrobial stewardship. The choice of prophylactic antibiotic depends on the surgical site, which influences the bacteria which might be inoculated after incision. In case vancomycin or fluoroquinolone is the prophylactic antibiotic of choice, it should be infused 120 minutes before incision or induction of anesthesia. For the other antibiotics, infusion should be done 60 minutes before incision or induction of anesthesia. In case surgery lasts longer than two half-lives of the prophylactic antibiotic or if more than 1,500 milliliters of blood is lost during the procedure, the prophylactic antibiotic should be redosed. The same applies to cases where large volumes of IV fluids are infused due to volume depletion as a result of hemorrhage. During the audit, you are expected to capture details e.g. date of surgery, patient's identification, that is the AK number, ward where the patient is admitted, the type of procedure or surgery, the antibiotic or antibiotics prescribed and administered, the duration of antibiotic administration and the dose administered. The antibiotic dose and choice are compared to guideline recommendations depending on which organ or body part is operated. Different bacteria colonize or inhabit different body parts. They also have varying susceptibilities to antibiotics therefore no single antibiotic is suitable for prophylaxis in all types of surgery. All auditors should closely refer to the antibiotic prophylaxis guidelines during the audits and establish appropriateness or inappropriateness of the antibiotic choice. This should be captured in the paper version of the data collection tool. The auditor should also note down whether or not the antibiotic was prescribed on the appropriate section or page. The treatment sheet has a designated section for all prophylactic antibiotics. The auditor should also document to which division of surgery i.e. specialty the surgeon belongs and the primary surgeon's name. The auditor should also capture the anesthetist's name. In case more doses are prescribed after the surgical prophylaxis dose, the name of the prescriber of subsequent doses should be captured by the auditor. The auditor should also document the approximate amount of blood lost during surgery from the surgeon's notes. For long procedures, the auditors should also document whether redosing was done perioperatively as per guideline recommendations. Failure to redose in the case of prolonged procedures increases chances of surgical site infection since antibiotic concentrations at the surgical site fall with time. The auditor should document the length of the entire duration of surgery from the clinical notes. The auditor should also document the wound class, the duration that elapsed between incision and wound closure from the clinical notes. All these details should then be entered into the APIT data collection tool. APIT is an abbreviation for Antibiotic Prophylaxis Auditing Tool. 
This data is analyzed by the antimicrobial steward by the first date of every new month. The antimicrobial steward uploads the analyzed data into the appropriate tool in the dashboard in the antimicrobial stewardship folder in the hospital dashboard. So in a nutshell that summarizes the appropriate auditing procedure used in monitoring the use or administration of prophylactic antibiotics in surgical patients at the Aga Khan University Hospital Nairobi, feel free to view this video multiple times and endeavor to internalize its contents. Apply the knowledge gleaned from it to effectively audit the use of antibiotics in our operation rooms. I hope you find it useful and easy to apply and actualize. I now make a passionate appeal to you all to join me in the exercise of regular auditing of antibiotic prophylaxis for the benefit of our esteemed clients. Streamlining antibiotic surgical prophylaxis will go a long way to reduce irrational antibiotic use which is a major driver of antibiotic resistance. Let's all play our active role as custodians of antibiotics in the institution. Thank you all.